It's the battle of recently appointed managers this weekend as QPR entertain Bristol City. Let's catch the QPR view first of all. Welcome back, Jawad. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You? I'm good, thank you. So, uh, Marty came in and he's immediately ended your six-game losing streak. How about that? Yeah, it was a lot more positive at the weekend. Um, actually tried to play a bit of football, created some chances... Possibly could have won. I wouldn't say we deserved to win, but um, I think they came away a little bit um, disappointed that they didn't get the points. Um, but I think there's a lot more positivity around it. Um, I think this Saturday is going to be absolutely crucial for our season moving forward. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll come on to Bristol City in a second. Elias Chair looks a rejuvenated uh, player, even that even that one game. What was the what was the system? Uh, for, forgive me, I, didn't, I haven't seen the I've only really seen the highlights. So I was seen the full game. What was what was the what was the setup? What was the changes in formation and personnel that we saw last weekend? So he went to a back four. Um, I would have thought, listening to him speak beforehand, that is the way that he prefers to go. Um, I think before when every every centre back was fit, Ainsworth chose to go through at the back because I don't think he trusted them as much. Um, and then we obviously had um, Jack Holback and Dazel suspended, so Samfield obviously played just in front, and we gave a full debut to Elijah Dixon Bonner, who we signed from Liverpool under Michael Beale. Actually, so that was his first full start. It did did it exceptionally well, um, and then went with uh, a three of Chair Willock and Smith behind behind dykes um which is again on paper probably the strongest attacking lineup that he could play chris willock's still not quite fit and firing yet but but hopefully that that can come and then it was unfortunate that the chair then picks up a yellow card and, and is now suspended for this game <laughs> yeah and i think i think it's kind of testament to how easy it is to pick up yellow cards because out of all the players in that squad he's he probably makes the least the least tackles um i think a number of the cards have been quite petulant things saturday was kicking the ball away i think there's been a couple where he's complained to the referee too much and got got a booking but the timing really couldn't have been any any worse for us What's the feeling on the terraces then? There's, there's positivity, yeah. You can see, you can, they can see what he's trying to do with that team. Yeah, you could absolutely see the way that he wanted to play, um, getting the best out of players. Really, um, our fullbacks are going to be really, really important. They they played play well at the weekend, um, and I think just seeing Chair playing with a bit more freedom, a bit more confidence, actually looking to get him on the ball in dangerous areas. Um, I think we're going to miss him on Saturday massively. Um, but definitely there's there's a more positive feeling. I, I do think Saturday's going to be absolutely crucial though. I, I did like his interview at the end. He he, he kind of, he appeared insulted to suggest that, you know, he was playing for a draw and saying, you know, I, I, I don't come here to draw. I come here, come here to win every game. It's a nice, nice refreshing attitude. Um, yeah. And that, that went down well with the fans. I think from, a manager that in the past has been like we did really well to get a point or we did we did brilliantly in a two one defeat kind of I think I think he's probably been told by somebody at the club you've got to be like yeah we need to win games we're not an underdog um okay yeah. so March the eleventh then is a date which uh, QPR fans have have had <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, ingrained onto their into their, their heads and you'll, you'll be you'll be hopeful won't you this weekend that you can get rid of March the eleventh as as the date of your your last yeah <laughs> yeah last and there's there's another one we've not scored more than one goal in the home game for over a year now either so I think those those stats are, are horrific and. For the life of me, I can't think of a team that's had such a bad home record over such a long period of time. I think it's probably harder to do that than it is to nick a win somewhere. Um, and we haven't even been close to, to nicking a win either. It's not like we've been unlucky in those games. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think there's a quiet confidence that things will change at the weekend. I think with Bristol City bringing in a new manager in, you don't quite know how that's going to go either. So, okay. um does Colback and Dazelle come straight back in then after they're now available again? I would have thought one of them will come in and replace Chair and he might push Dixon Bonner slightly, but 
further forward. I think it'll be quite harsh to to drop him because he was one of our one of our best players. He's he's young. He was brave on the ball. He wanted to try things out, and if it didn't work out, he didn't drop his head. Um, and he asked, uh, the manager picked him out after afterwards for for praise as well. Um, so I would have thought I would probably been bring Cole back in, but it'll be interesting. Right, we'll get some predictions from you in a second then. Just okay. pause right there. Thanks, Joe. Let's get the Bristol City view. This week, Bristol City announced finally their new manager. Um, oh, sorry. Balls that up. <laughs> <laughs> this week, Bristol City announced their new manager. They stole Oxford United's uh, manager, uh, Manning. Happy with that, Sam? Uh, to be fair, it wouldn't have been my personal choice but he's done a fairly good job at Oxford to, to say the truth and we just got to get behind him now it's a strange choice isn't it what who else do you believe do you understand was in the running and, and who would you have, have, have appointed I mean that well there's so many names thrown around from Eustace Lampard Rowett I mean I would have liked to have gone with Lampard but there was a belief among the fans he has second thoughts on the job at the weekend. But um, the Lansdowne, sorry, the Lansdowne's were saying that Liam Manning was always their first choice. Well, can you believe that? I mean, so unspectacular, I, I, I suppose, in, in in some ways. But does this does this scream of another club wanting to get a young? Progressive manager, something for the future, you know, a project. Dare we use dare we use his words rather than perhaps going with an, an older an older face or a, a, you know a more established name. Yeah, that definitely. When when you hear the Lansdowne and Brian Tinian interviews, uh, they definitely said they were looking for a young coach uh, to progress and hopefully with the club progress with them. This is a risk, though, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. I mean, he didn't do... All right, MK Dons, he had a good first season, missed out on automatic promotion by a point, lost in the playoffs, but then second season, ended up getting a sack. The um, the, the game last weekend where you you, you, you beat Sheffield Wednesday, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, not worth talking about because it could be completely different, <laughs> completely different eleven that we see against against QPR. Just briefly, what were your what were your views on that game? I mean, Wednesday yeah, de- definitely, definitely wasn't worth talking about. Although we got the three points, it was a very, very poor game. To be fair, I mean, to be fair to Sheffield Wednesday, they come down there, had Barry Bannon sat, sent off after twenty eight minutes, which has now been reversed. But in my view, it was a sending off. But they just put six men at the back and looked to counter every time. Yeah, and it, and it nearly and it nearly paid off. What do you make then of, of the of the trip then this weekend? I mean, I can't ask you to predict the team because we, we've 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 got no ideas. Would you would you um, recall Sam Bell in the final third or and keep Andres Weiman on the left? To, to be fair, I'd still leave Sam Bell out at the moment. He's looking very tired when he's playing. But at the same time, I would drop Weiman and play Mometi in his place. Because against Cardiff, I think he played the best game I've seen him play personally in a City shirt. And then he's out of the team again Saturday. And what's the view on the general terraces of the people that you've spoke to then about, about Liam Manning? How has this gone down? Yeah, to be fair, it's all the same. It wouldn't have been our personal choices. But the decision's been made by the club and come Saturday, three o'clock, we'll be there supporting him and giving him our all. Okay. All right. We'll get to bring our QPR fan in and we'll get some predictions. Thank you, Sam. Just pause there. Okay. It's a really, really important one, this one, for both teams. QPR against Bristol City. Let's get some predictions. Gerard, you can go first. Um, I think the last seven fixtures between us, the away team has won, which is quite a strange, a strange stat. Um, so hopefully we can break that at the weekend. Um, obviously got Rob Dickey and Naki Wells coming back, which adds a bit of spice to it. Um, we were actually strongly linked with Manning as manager before before Bill Bill took over. He was he was favourite at one point. Um, so I wonder if if he's got a point 
to prove to the QPR board as well. Um, uh, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Can't quite bring myself to predict the win. <laughs> one week. One week you'll predict. Yeah, one week I will. <laughs> okay, Sam, what are you going with? Well, as as Jared said, we've um, it's been an even match both for both games, and we but we've won our last five away games at QPR now. So I'm going to go for another two 0 win. Amazing. Well, listen, both enjoy the game. I'm sure it's going to be a, a pretty feisty one. Um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers, both. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye.